Hello, hello, hello. So, um, <clears throat> this guy on New Tech was asking me, let's get rid of that, uh, how, nice workflow, how stable do you, and intuitive do you find booleans in Max? So, hello, boing, we're in Max. Now, um, overall, pretty good. Um, I use, um, there's a couple of different booleans in Max. There's the original one that probably came in in version 2 which I think I would tag with the line if it was works it's awesome and then when it doesn't it's not it's less than awesome as it's a real pain um, but back in I don't know version 7 maybe or 8 they added um, they bought uh, a third party developers plugin called ProBoolean which is uh, pretty good actually um, so let's let's go and what we're going to do is show this guy more or less how we got to that stage yeah um this is result out of zbrush and then back in studio max but it doesn't really matter what the what the uh app is in the end you can put this into lightwave like that one's back in lightwave whatever blah 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 i'm waffling on so um like a magic show i've, I've prepared my version i think the thing i do like in max um, and this is why, for some models, it's it's really cool. In other models, it, it really doesn't matter. I mean, any boolean operation in most programs will be absolutely fine because we don't care about how it looks and how many triangles there are and all that. Oh my God, it looks like a spider's nest, you know, when you when you finish booleaning. Because I'm just going to go and throw it in ZBrush and it'll just go and magically fix everything, which is really cool. Um, but to get some of the cutters in place. Um, or get the shape in place you're after. Um, I just find it's possibly easier in 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 Max for some types of shapes um, because I have a thing called a stack inside Max. Where, for instance, this is my basic box. If I go down to where the box is, that's my sides and segments and whatever. And I can then uh, add an FFD lattice, and what that's doing is I've just basically bent the front end of it. Yeah. Then after that, I can then say uh, I want to do another one, thanks, and do that. And basically, doing like a, a manual version of taper, just to taper the top in. And after that, I can then bend it. I can bend that over, and that bends that over. So okay, I'm sort of happy with that. And then I can hit a turbo smooth, and it turbo smooths it. Yeah, and then I can say, okay, how's the let's switch off uh, F4? How's the result look? If I go up to the top, and you can see how's the result look. Am I happy with that? Or do I find that it needs to be tapered more, for instance? So if it does, then I can just go down to control points here, for example. And let's just look in a left view, maybe. Is it left view? No, it's a front view. I've got it the wrong way around, as usual. So in here, I can then go to my control points and just go and say, I'm just going to go and grab these control points. And I'm going to go and scale them. And I'll put the center scale there. And then I can just. Um, scale in and you can see the result after the bend okay so that to me is cool I can also um, change my bend can't I I can say is that bent enough or do you want it a bit more bent for instance I can do whatever I want with it and you know I can sort of get it into place or oh, control Z that um, the other thing is I can say that my box the segments I've got on it here let's go here and put F thingy on it How's that looking? Um, we'll go turbo smooth and we'll do isoline display so we can see what we're looking at. Is that sort of okay? Or do I actually need some more height segments to tighten this curve up a bit more? So I could do that, yeah, so it's a bit more sharper looking. Um, so that's why, really. Um, yeah, so there you go. So this is the reason why I like um, modify stacks. So if I could have this inside Modo as long and with the uh, mesh fusion thing, sort of ideal world really. So I can edit my cutters um, and change things around. I'm not I'm not committing to a bend that you know if you lock in Lightwave and in Modo. I think once you've bent things, it's very hard to unbend it. Um, like I can't even bothered trying because I don't think you really can. You have to go and do the operation again. In which case you start adding extra layers of I got that far, that's my save, now I'll go and add a bend. If it doesn't work out, I'll delete it, go back to where I was a minute ago and rebend it. So 
that's why I like modify stacks, but that's just me. And uh, it doesn't stop people in other programs for building fantastic things without the idea of a modify stack. It's just that I'm basically useless, and <laughs> any little help to help me helps because um, I'm not the brainiest person on the planet, as you will probably uh, imagine. So there you go. So um, with that, we then need to. Oh, I am waffling, and I. So what we need to do now is basically uh, one. I'm going to turn off ice line display because sometimes when you convert to um, polygons it doesn't uh, do a good job of it so I'm going to say uh, no and then we'll just go up and down to make it refresh there we go so we're going to say that's cool so that's okay it's nice I'm going to change this bit though let's go to this where we were width segments on it let's make them a bit more squarey looking so it looks a bit more uniform so that's more like what we want to play with okay and I'm going to go and collapse this now into a editable poly there we go. Okay, so now I can unhide my negative objects. So this is my master object I'm going to be cutting into. So let's unhide these negatives. So I made them colour coded blue just so you all remain happy and wonderful. So this guy is still an FFD lattice. I added a little bit of a curve to the top of him. So it curves in a little bit and made sure he's poking through. You know what? He's not poking through enough, is he? So let's just go to box and what do we want to change? Da, 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 da. I'm gonna imagine it's that one, that one. There we go. So he's definitely poking through more. Okay, and he's got a bit stretchy. So what do we just change? Longest one is width. So uh, make some more, make it more squarey looking. Okay, happy with that. Apart from we don't need that many on there. Da, 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 da. So I'm gonna say it's that one. So length segments is that. There we go. That's better. So we've got nice square polygons. Right. So right and click convert to edible poly that's got rid of the whole stack and this little guy down here let's get hold of him is he poking through okay he's fine isn't he so again he's not very good square polygons let's try and sort this out so <coughs> box let's go to dip them that's more square but we don't need so many of them or them how's that looking uh, that's sort of square-ish it'll do Alright, so we can then go right and click, convert to editable poly. So we're more or less back in the land of any program now without modifiers. We've got our results. And we need to say we've got an additive thing as well, so we'll unhide him. He's in green, so he's all pretty cool. Is he he's actually is an editable poly already. So this was just um, a box with a taper on it, and then I had a symmetry modifier to symmetrize him over to this side, and then I've collapsed it down to polygons. Uh, after I added a turbo smooth, right. So let's let's get on with it because we've not been doing a lot, have we? <coughs> so uh, master object, go into creation. So you usually create boxes and things, but you can also create compounds, compound object. And we're going to hit pro boolean. Now this is during <laughs> this will bound not to work now. Now I'm recording it, but we'll we'll have a go. Pro boolean. Okay, it's on subtraction and it's going to say start picking. So I'm going to say I want to pick, uh, press the button, I want to pick um, this please. Click, boom, so that's cut that away. You'll notice it can take on uh, the material as well. You, know, you don't have to do that, we've just said apply material, so it has. And I want to go and click on this guy. So he's taken away him. And what I want to do with this, I want to add this. So I'm going to change it from subtraction into union and then I'm going to pick this guy boom there you go stop picking right so now I've got my very very wonderful I mean look at the resulting mesh isn't that beautiful but you know what we don't care because ZBrush is going to fix all this how cool is that so all we need to do now if you can't export this because it's still a pro boolean I can still go in here and change these sub objects yeah, I can go and get my subdivision number thingy and then I can move it around or whatever I want to do with it but we're not going to do that so what I really need to do now is hit uh, let's go and select it okay right hand click it convert to editable poly and there we go so now I can go and export that into um, that's lovely there look at that ow um, go and export that into ZBrush and basically run Z remesher over it well, run DynaMesh first, then Z Remesher, um, then export, and then be happy. And that's it, basically. So, yeah, there you go. So that's 
uh, Pro Boolean in Studio Max and how to get your cutters working and why I particularly choose currently to use Max to do some of my Boolean operations because of this modifier stack thing so to get these shapes I just find it easier because I don't have to like guess where I'm going with it I can go uh, it may be there and then change it later um, but you know what I wish I didn't have to because it's you know Max cost me a lot of money per year to keep it going and uh, if you've noticed I'm actually running 2008 version rather than 2014 because uh, it's just launches quicker and is less buggy. I'm hoping they're going to fix. You know, my my ideal I'm moaning now. My ideal thing for the next release of Studio Max is it gets some of the performance back and ease of use of the older versions, but adds some new tools. We can pray, can't we? See how we go. Right, I am waffling on, so that will do. Um, I'm going to have a cup of tea because I think I've done an ace video. So yeah, see you in it. Uh, feel free to like, share, comment, thumbs down, whatever you want to do to it. That's fine by me. And uh, see you on the next spin of the earth. See ya. Cheers. Bye.